so today's topic of discussion is uh, converts theorem so we are going to discuss converts theorem uh, in context of Lyapunov but before I start discussion let me explain you what is the need of converts theorem like what we have studied as of now that for uh, autonomous and not autonomous system we have started how to construct means uh, uh, Lyapunov function means not for autonomous system uh, like non autonomous system but for autonomous system we have also studied variable gradient method we have done many things to prove the stability of a system or means uh, we uh, read a lot of theorems that deal with the stability of the theorem however uh, there is a problem what is that problem like if you consider non-autonomous system then uniform asymptotic stability or exponential uh, asymptotic stability of the origin it requires the existence of a vt comma x and it depends on the assumption that you know that Lyapunov function vt comma x that satisfies certain conditions and the existence of uh, like auxiliary function vt comma x that satisfies certain condition typical in many theorems of Lyapunov method but the main problem that uh, like uh, what is the main problem like two questions we can raise here first of all that how means uh, is there exist at all a function that satisfies Lyapunov function like what I uh, discussed at the very beginning of this Lyapunov uh, like if we consider it as a lap of session continuously excluding one or two particular topic like sensitivity or others so you must have noticed uh, that uh, i said that it is something that gives a sufficient condition it is not for necessary condition like if your lap of test fails uh, that doesn't uh, indicate that your system is unstable right so uh, and there is uh, like uh, you have to go for a random uh, test and it is not uh, easy case and second is that obvious uh, answer that how we can search for a function we can uh, take help of variable gradient method but that is also not that flexible and not uh, easy to uh, apply for a real system so the answer lies here rather the a is the like your mm, that is known as converse lap of converse theory. now uh, this converse lap of theorem it is like uh, it's amazing power is that here we started in a reverse manner like we start with an assumption of uh, having a negative definite or something uh, condition that satisfies the uh, means requirement of a system being stable and then we gradually proceed and if we uh, in that way if we get a positive definite function like a reverse construction we do and if that satisfies then we assure or we get an assurance that it is a case of uh, like stable system so before i start let me once again repeat what i said just now that instead of randomly pick up any laptop function and try our luck what we do we pick up a derivative of something or like derivative like things and we impose certain condition on those derivatives and then we go back to uh, by constructing the Lyapunov function like things and if the end product 
satisfies the requirement of uh, being an energy like function then we ensure that it is a stable system otherwise not so let us study that theorem with very important what happened oh god okay sometimes uh, this computer uh, do such a means such an amazing things i can figure out what it's actually trying to do so let us consider that same system with be the equilibrium right now in addition to, let us do all those things what we uh, used to do from the very beginning this is the definition of function f uh, is continuously differentiable on d and we define d like same approach so what i asked you several times that do not wrote means or do not try to mark up things try to understand as they are and you will find it is very simple it is uh, reduce your burden to like uh, almost one fourth of what it appears to you at the very first instance so you please try to understand try, try to feel do not get panic that uh, we are having so many theorems so many things it is all about just your natural understanding natural intuition if you just uh, it is the art you must learn that how you can uh, means apply your natural intuition to an engineering problem nothing else so uh, here and the jacobian matrix with your
do understand that the, here this lambda has nothing to do with that uh, sensitivity uh, parameter lambda, right? So, uh, means people often get confused that uh, it has something to do here. But uh, that lambda was, if you recall it correctly, lambda was a vector. It comprises several uh, parameter. Parameter vector, you can say. Lambda belongs to Rp. R to the power P means uh, a P dimensional real number system. However, here it is totally a positive constant. You can write here lambda belongs to this. It is no way related to that lambda, so please don't get confused. It is just here to ensure an exponential convergence rate. That's all. Here, um, one thing I just uh, like I think uh, I forgot to mention here that uh, again we are considering that this equilibrium point x is equal to 0 is within this domain D, right? Uh, it is not uh, the domain D is not something that uh, doesn't include it, okay? So, if that is the case then what we will have Oh God, <laughs> again we have reached the end of the page. Such that C1, C2, C3, C4 all are positive constant. Right. Moreover, uh, this is for global asymptotic stability. Like if R that these are is infinite, then the origin of the system is globally exponentially stable and this V T comma X uh, is defined and satisfies the all the conditions. All the conditions means these conditions. Furthermore, the system, if the system is autonomous, then we can uh, select V independent of T, like all these could be dropped, and uh, only we can have to deal with uh, these two, then uh, we will get the condition. Now, uh, try to understand the uh, very basic things that here what I stated before writing this theorem in a uh, formal uh, 
or in form of a mathematical description what i said we are going to do exactly the same thing we are assuming that if the system is globally exponentially stable then all these things will uh, hold good for a function and then the trajectory will also be like this like uh, if your trajectory satisfies this means you have already assumed your system is uh, exponentially stable and for that you will get all these things so now we will uh, try to prove this theorem so here it goes the proof uh, that like what uh, we would like to exploit here that is the equivalence of norm. So we will prove this for two norms and this uh, we can uh, ensure that it will hold good for other norms also. Now let us consider a uh, solution that is uh, gamma uh, right. Now, for all x belongs to D0, if we have then we can have Like we are taking it as a solution quadratic function of the solution itself. Where your this delta is a positive constant. Now due to exponentially decaying trajectory obviously this will uh, form that quadratic take that quadratic shape like uh, So obviously this is, uh, if we go back there, we can find out that this will be upper bounded by this one, right? So we will have this present there, uh, but in a square form, like what you will have here, you will have less than is equal to k 
a square e to the power minus 2 lambda tau minus t d tau as here this x is like your initial one though it has nothing to do here so you will get it like Now, on the other hand, if you see that we made a statement like del, F, del X is bounded. Somewhere here, I think I have mentioned, oh yeah, del F del X is bounded on D. So, if del F del X is bounded on D, then we can always assign some limit like for the second norm. So obviously here you need to take the norm of a del f del x is a matrix and obviously you need to take a that second norm of that matrix itself. Uh, this for all so this immediately follows that I'm not going to prove it that how we can reach to this conclusion. But you can uh, intuitively understand that uh, if uh, your del f del x that is uh, bounded by some value it is like uh, you are just uh, like you can understand that uh, at the beginning uh, this statement comes from the bound statement and then is it is bounded so you can always have an uh, not only bounded uh, we said it is uh, uniformly bounded the, the, this is bounded on D so we can have a value L that gives us the maximum value of bound. Now for that we can have uh, this one like if you just slightly change the side then uh, previously del f del x was what? It was like you are measuring the rate of change of a uh, function or rather uh, vector with respect to means each component of a vector with respect to your state vector x and now when you are taking that function uh, if you recall the Lipschitz, Lipschitz indicates what that it is like that uh, it has a sense with uh, means common with Lipschitz like there should not be any change of abrupt bound or sorry abrupt uh, change in abrupt change in slope is not possible if you of the Lipschitz function so here if it is bounded then obviously if the rate of change is bounded then obviously the function change uh, or rather the function value with respect to that independent variable that must be bounded by this condition we can prove it mathematically but i am not doing that you can uh, check it by yourself or actually why i am trying to avoid this proof because i want that you people sometimes do it by yourself because in your exam, you are going to get these kind of things. So, uh, it will be uh, good if you can do all these things. Uh, the lower bound, uh, the solution will... Uh, have a lower bound not the solution actually the solution norm
So basically what we will get that Right. So basically we are doing the same thing that we uh, did in the earlier case also instead of uh, dealing with that complicated function we take even in case of non-autonomous system we did it like uh, instead of uh, dealing with the exact function we take some suitable approximation and then we manage the things with that. So here also we will uh, do the same thing. now. Here, one thing we need to understand that is very clear, like uh, just a minute. Uh, so, with this choice, you will be uh, surprised to note that this Vt, x now it is greater than this and it is uh, less than where it was, yeah, less than this, uh, like uh, your. Uh, and greater than this so what you will have here you will have your v t comma x that is satisfying to uh, like what was that form it was c1 So if we compare with that, we will get C1 is equal to So obviously by suitable choice of this variable L or delta and lambda, you can ensure a good uh, means this uh, means ensure that they satisfy this equation. Now see that what we can uh, calculate or we can do what to calculate the uh, trajectories of or derivatives of v along the trajectory of the system now uh, to calculate the derivative of v along the trajectories of the system we can uh, just extend the concept of that sensitivity function what we studied in our uh, last video that Here we are having two variables like uh, don't uh, means have a fixed notion that sensitivity function means always we will consider the variation of something with respect to like uh, 
dependence on something with respect to parameter variation or how sensitive our system solution with respect to parameter variation but it can always be like anything how our system solution is uh, sensitive to time variation how our system solution is sensitive to itself the state variation all these things can be treated as a like or uh, can be uh, treated in the light of uh, that kind of sensitivity analysis so there is nothing new and nothing uh, means we are in this uh, so we can write del v del t oh god we have reached the end of the page so not to write it here so what we can write del v del t plus del v del x f of t comma x now this is what see this del v del t uh, we can write the by definition our v is what v is a quadratic function of our solution so we can write it like it will be just a minute So again if you simplify what you will get here, this will give you norm x square. So let me use cut copy paste.
So from this, uh, like we can easily show this that the whole thing, the whole thing means this one, the bracketed part, totally is equal to zero for uh, all tau greater than is equal to t. Like this part is equal to zero for all tau greater than is equal to t. We can show it. So if that is the case, uh, then obviously what uh, remains like Now this part is identically equal to zero for all tau greater than t. Therefore, the leftover what we can have here that is del v del t plus del v del x And that is what this solution, this is uh, from your previous discussion, we know that this one is like bounded by 1 minus k square e to the power minus 2 lambda delta, right? So this whole thing, this total thing this was what this was like uh, we can write it that this whole thing together with this uh, i am not going to other page otherwise i cannot concentrate and lost the connectivity with this one that is minus one minus k square e to the power minus 2 lambda delta this is the whole thing right now uh, from this uh, from this what we can see here We can from this what we can write uh, if we just manipulate the constant a little bit by assuming suitable value for them like lambda is equal to ln. 2k square by 2 lambda like delta is equal to this value then what we will have we will have the second inequality of the theorem like which one second inequality means this one this minus c3 this you will uh, get it like this will be getting satisfied for c3 is equal to half right
तो यू आर गेटिंग दिस लाइक it will be well sometimes my computer cause so much problem that i cannot read neither i could move and sometimes i think i am writing but when i read uh, open my eyes i see nothing was written there in the board anyway so uh, now the last inequality that last inequality all about uh, that um, the last part uh, it is this one this we need to prove so here the last inequality we have to prove now let us take that one that gamma x tau t comma x that satisfies the sensitivity equation in this way like del this is the case now what we know that this uh, norm like uh, we have already decided that due to boundedness it is true now on d the uh, it's uh, like differentiation of solution that satisfies your bound so what we can write that fine actually why we are doing that we are uh, trying to prove that del v del x is less than some uh, positive number that is what we are trying to establish so with this actually i know this is start some but have to do because until unless we understand the proof we will never be able to solve any problem
hit five. Yeah, so you should write this capital gamma. This you can write it like Now, see, this whole thing can again be simplified. So, how to tackle every time if a person needs to jump to other page, how he could write it? So, from this, what you can write, this one, this whole thing is equal to 2k by lambda minus l 1 minus just if you evaluate this integration you will get this there is nothing rocket science involved here you will get a simple integration of this whole thing by doing some integration by parts you can do it now what is I have seen a few modern calculator they can do all the things for you whatever you wish you can select those methods to calculate it So from this what we can say that this whole thing, this whole thing is your C4, right? And I leave this part to prove it for globally for you. You try to prove it that this argument holds good. If we can have the uh, means liberty to R0, select R0 or R0, R3 really large. Okay, so let us see how you can prove it. Now we will go to our next theorem. Now we will do the same for uh, like our uniform stability. Uh, let us consider that for same equation x dot is equal to f of x comma t comma x what we are having here. We are having our equilibrium point at 
x is equal to 0 and with all the assumptions and within the ball that is d is equal to here uh, the Jacobian matrix if we can see that the Jacobian matrix uniformly pick to T let beta be a class KL function and R not be a just uh, R not be a positive constant such that actually uh, everything almost remains same uh, the objective of writing this is to help you understanding the uh, measure's lemma right sorry Now let us assume that the trajectory of the system uh, that is having this uh, means this is bounded trajectory like it is bounded by a class KL function beta having said that is then we will always construct a continuously differentiable function v
where all these alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha 4 all are class k function uh, defined on and if the system is autonomous V can be chosen independent of time t. So now we will prove this using Mascheda's lemma. So now we will go for Mascheda's lemma. So what is Mascheda's lemma? It states that we have a function, it first consider a function G defined on a semi closed interval be a positive continuous strictly decreasing function with G dot T tends to sorry with uh, sorry, sorry, sorry with G T tends to zero as T tends to infinity and let us consider another function H defined of same interval be a positive continuous non-decreasing function so one is decreasing another one is non-decreasing then there exist a function of t such that gt and its derivative with respect to t g dash t are class k functions uh, class k functions defined for all t greater than is equal to 0 this is point number 1 point number 2 is that it states for any continuous function ut
ut that satisfies your zero less than is equal to ut less than is equal to gt gt is that gt not this gt for all t greater than is equal to zero so what you can understand about this uh, ut uh, uh, try to understand about gt gt is strictly decreasing so undoubtedly if ut is uh, upper bounded by gt then ut is also a strictly uh, decreasing function then there exists positive constant there exists positive constants small q1 and k2 that is independent of u such that you can write So this is all about Mascherat's lemma. Now we have to provide the proof. Once again, what is ut? ut is such a function that is a bounded function of course, upper bounded by gt and lower bounded by zero. ut cannot be negative uh, from the statement. And uh, like, um, we are having a g and g dash t they are class k functions so what is class k functions class k functions we know that they has a tendency uh, to tends to infinity if you allow their argument to in so it is clear that if the function is class k gt and g dash t both are class k functions that is also very interesting so uh, then what we can uh, show here that if we pass this g ut dt uh, the beauty of this equation is that ut is strictly decreasing you are passing a strictly decreasing argument to a increasing function and obviously you can figure out that uh, means intuitively also you can figure out that the area integration is what integration generally what we understand that is the area under the curve now although you are having a strictly uh, means increasing function but if you pass an argument that is continuously decreasing in nature then although that strictly increasing function value will be will automatically means being class k still its value will decrease because you are passing an argument that is uh, gradually uh, decreasing or shrinking. So, what would happen to the curve, area under the curve? Obviously, the area under the curve will be bounded, and that bound is nothing but k1, right? And uh, the same thing would happen to uh, like k2. What you are doing that you are having a strictly decreasing quad. And means uh, like you are trying to say that 
if you pass that g dash ut g dash ut g dash is again a class k function and ut is something that it is uh, decreasing in nature while ht is increasing like you are having a function that is one a product of two functions one is increasing another one is decreasing and you are trying to evaluate their integration common integration and still you will find that the area under the curve is bounded by certain value so let us see this is all about Mascherat's lemma Uh, so let us start the proof. So what we can see that gt is strictly decreasing. Now we can select a sequence of we can select a sequence where n is equal to any natural number 1 to what uh, do we understand by sequence now we will use this sequence to define two function uh, define a function eta t how it is eta t eta t n is 1 upon n at between n plus 1 this variation eta t is linear so eta t n is 1 upon n now this is point 0.1 point 0.2 all this describe the function that we are uh, defining that is eta t in in the interval Because you can see that here, oh God, we have been. so what is this? Uh, so what we need to select that p p be such a large number, p is a positive integer, or we can write. P is uh, such a large number that eta draw means the derivative eta dash t is having a jump at So, what is the logic behind us uh, selecting a p that is quite high? Because you can see that here the way we are defining uh, this function eta t below, uh, see, first of all eta t n, as long as uh, n is greater than 1 to, then it's okay. When n is equal to 1, then it is uh, 1 by 1, that is 1. Now, uh, we are considering this case when it is less than this and it is uh, also clear that how it will uh, means suppose you may ask question that what would happen to any intermediate time like uh, between t1 t2 so it gives a very clear answer here that what would going to happen that it will vary in a linear manner right now this one this uh, is very interesting that when it is less than one so less than one what you can write we are defining it like t1 by t so uh, as long as um, this value will always be less than one right 
Now, uh, for that less than 1, what is required? We need a positive integer chosen in such a manner so large that it has a positive jump. Why? Uh, because if you select p is equal to some small values, then again uh, this t1 by t will approach to 1. Try to understand this. Because if you take uh, any number that is any fractional number say 0.25 if you execute its square root you will get 0.5 while 0.5 is greater than 0.25 the same is true for this so that is why we are mentioning that t1 by t that is always less than 1 in this range so uh, Sorry, greater than 1 in this range. Now, here uh, this P has to be chosen in such a way that we must get a jump here. Right. Now, uh, go to the next page. Just a minute. Now, the function eta t is strictly decreasing the way we have defined considering three points. And for uh, t greater than is equal to t1, it is easy to verify for us that we have gt less than eta t. Now, uh, uh, now, uh, as our t uh, tends to 0, here we can see that the way we have defined uh, eta t, eta t grows unbounded. Some uh, roadside children are Howling, so there may be some noise. Now, the inverse of this eta t that is denoted by eta inverse s is a strictly decreasing function. that grows unbounded when we are having s tends to 0 plus right so what we can have here So what we have uh, proved, uh, just shown, uh, that just quickly uh, recall everything, we have a continuous function 0, uh, ut, uh, that is upper bounded by gt, and then uh, we try to define gt in this way, then we are having, gt is a sequence like this, and uh, then we are having another function eta t that is defined in this way uh, this is not eta this is n try to understand the difference so eta t n is 1 by n now obvious question will come that time is uh, increasing or varying in a continuous manner so what happened between two oh, means time point that are not integer so 
in that case eta t is linear and when you consider the third case when t it is less than of 1 t1 then it is like we define it p uh, such a positive large integer that it gives us a jump there at that point right so now if that is the case then uh, if uh, well if that is the case then it is clear that this one eta t is a uh, like if you allow t turns to 0 plus eta t grows unbounded now we have an inverse function that is also strictly decreasing and that grows unbounded when s tends to 0 plus now obviously uh, it may makes you confused that how it can it is possible like s tends to 0 plus and t tends to 0 plus if, uh, uh, means you can draw an analogy between uh, your like those we uh, studied during our circuit theory class that final value theorem so what happened in case of final value t tends to infinity that indicates what s tends to 0 or what happened in case of initial value t tends to 0 that means s tends to infinity so uh, although it appears in that way but don't think that t and s simultaneously they are approaching 0 if one approaches 0 then other approaches infinity in that way you can think so then we uh, do this step then for any non-negative function ut that is upper bounded by gt we define another function actually this is a proof by construction constructive proof is h is what is that Now, since uh, we have eta inverse is continuous, which is positive, sorry. In addition, what we have capital H is, is continuous. On the interval zero comma infinity while your as s tends to 0. So, if this is the case, then we can define a class k function on the same interval uh, this It will become Vs, 
just uh, I'm not feeling good just let me take a short break so our capital H is uh, it defines a class K function I am very sorry that uh, due to sudden illness, uh, I just uh, couldn't deliver it early. Right. So then it follows from the integral that g is exists and both your are class k function right Now, one thing that is interesting to note here that ut, ut be a continuous non-negative function, we have ut uh, upper bounded by gt. So, what we can write that uh, this uh, g dash ut is equal to Inverse ut this whole thing is upper bounded by for all t greater than is equal to t1. So what we can write that if we carry out an integration from t1 to infinity, we can write See the whole thing here. Uh, this, uh, if you carry out this integration from t1 to infinity, it will always result uh, you 1 because one end will become 0 and the other end t1 being non zero and greater than 0 will result you something less than. Uh, so it is always the case. Uh, now, oh god. Now what you can write from here?
we can write that right now we have proved it for the second integral now for the first one what we need to do for the first one what is our goal that uh, we need to show that right so with this for an in uh, region the second integration it is carrying out from 0 to eta t what would happen if you integrate in that region like you will get so basically uh, this whole thing here in the box can be shown as like it is less than is equal to fine so if this is the case then this can be written like is less than is equal to k1 so first lemma is bound means first integral is bounded so here we have proved the entire Mascheras lemma now you have to prove the uh, theorem of uniform stability using this Mascheras lemma so let us do that so what uh, it stated in that theorem like first of all we have to consider a Lyapunov function uh, 
a class A function. What is this phi? It is the solution that starts at t comma x and obviously g is a class k function. Uh, we will select g capital G as per Mascherat's lemma. Now with that what we will be getting that if we carry out del phi del x that will result as Well, d tau, right? If this is the case, then this can be written like beta D top. Fine. Just do it. Well, there was certain problem at my end, so I couldn't uh, do it correctly. Let me correct it and then let us proceed. Like this could be written like less than is equal to infinity. Uh, it should be 0 to infinity. G dash. Well, it's a class K function. It is just a means you can say a replacement of the integration limit by replacing a variable by another variable. Here we are actually replacing tau minus t by s and therefore when this lower limit is t, it becomes s is equal to 0. So this, uh, with this, uh, uh, if we compare it with the previous theorem, then this whole thing, this one, you will be able to see that it is uh, something that we could define as a function that is plus k function it's bounded for all it is we can define it in this way that is uniformly in x
correct now uh, it is continuous and a strictly increasing function because it's a class k function uh, now here you might be surprised that uh, the way we have written and we have just uh, uh, how one class KL function has given us a class K function that is quite interesting to note because if you integrate a class KL function with uh, respect to its second argument obviously when uh, you will end up with the result you will be having uh, only class K function that is class K with respect to its first argument uh, so it is uh, and being class k it is obviously it is continuous and strictly increasing function of norm x now uh, here another thing is very important to note that uh, like here we have proved the inequality now what we are interested we are interested in construction of v t comma x right so v t comma x this is the solution trajectory actually Now, this could be written like it's less than is equal to, so upper bounded by and so on. Again, you can do the replacement of variable here like uh, just to it, uh, did it like replacing uh, tau minus t by s and then we can define it like this whole thing is called another class k function alpha 2 so, so the last integral obviously you are having something that is bounded uh, for all your x2 is Euclidean norm less than is equal to R naught now it is very clear that what we are having here it is interestingly like if you club all the statements we can prove that or rather we have proved it is almost uh, self-evident or means it is a direct uh, consequence that we can prove that the derivative of v along the trajectory of the system we can write it like del v del t plus del v del x will be able to show that it will give us so it is actually it is all it uh, satisfies and Moreover, interestingly, if the system is autonomous, the solution depends only on uh, the gap tau minus t, not from which t you have started. So, it's in this way, it will become an autonomous one and the whole solution will become or even the v will become independent of t. Well, so uh, actually this Mascheras lemma is somewhat backdated and right now we do not construct Lagnock function in this way but why I just give you certain hints it is although it's not that important or impactful nowadays but uh, it is something that 
we cannot be uh, means completely uh, leave this topic untouched or be ignorant of this one because this is somewhat that is the genesis of uh, our modern day constructive control so it is like even if you know that there are so many shortcomings exist in your uh, conventional control engineering like uh, almost no way you can uh, do this or apply this in real life but still you find it's good it uh, means good to at least even at the even at the most uh, like advanced institute or means most premier institute most uh, renowned institute can not also drop that Nyquist theory, boat plot, all this from their curriculum. Because uh, nowadays they are undoubtedly their usage, their applications have been reduced by a tangible amount, but they still have certain impact. So similarly, if you see Mashera's lemma, last paper probably published in the year 2010 and since then there was almost no paper and like people nowadays do not want to follow this way because we have other other way other things to do but this Mashera's lemma if you understand it how this step by step and the, especially the essence of uh, developing a constructive proof so uh, that will help you to later on construct your own control uh, uh, means give you first of all it will give you a flavor of constructive control give you some idea that how we can construct a lapno function in that way you can proceed okay so that's all for today's lecture